Welcome to my presentation about the MBS FileMaker plugin. It's a big plugin. Um, we, we got over 4,600 functions already. Uh, that's a little bit more than FileMaker has built in. We got a lot of new functions this year already, 320, and we have over 450 example databases. So if you have a few free days, uh, 50 a day takes nine days. The plugin comes as one plugin file, so it's easy to install and update. Um, we support FileMaker 8.5 on Mac uh, and newer, and I think for Windows even down to FileMaker 7. And from time to time, people come with old versions and yeah, add the plugin to do something. We support Mac, Windows, Linux, and the iOS SDK. Oh, the slides are not up to date. I fix that later. So we do support iOS SDK already. And you can um, use the plugin everywhere except FileMaker Go. But you can build your own iOS application. One decision we made over 10 years ago was to have just one MBS function. So instead of filling the script editor or the calculation editor with thousands of functions, we have got one. And the first one is a function name, which can be the result of a calculation or a field in a database. So you can, instead of writing a script, you could have records in your database defining which functions to call. Put all the parameters in, in fields. For every function, you can uh, call the is error function to see if the, if the last function returned an error. And every function can fail, sometimes just because there's no memory available. And we have a lot of reference parameters. So, for example, you create a curl session, you get an ID back, and then you call various other call, curl functions and pass this ID. Same for editing images, where you open a picture, you get the ID. Then you draw one picture, another picture, you pass the IDs, and later you freeze the picture from memory. So I want to give a quick overview about uh, the main topics. And if you, if you see something interesting where you have questions, please stop me. So first one is curl. We can do uh, HTTP, FTP, SFTP, up and downloads. Um, this is convenient if you have to batch upload or batch download things. We support all the SSL, TLS, all the encryption standards, the proxies, the authentication, so you can pass username and password. You can run transfers synchronously, so your script is waiting, or asynchronously, or completely in the background. This way you can run several transfers in parallel, and even if FileMaker shows a dialog box, your background transfer will not stop. You can send all kinds of custom requests. Welcome. <coughs> custom requests and um, of course you can do various operations on FTP and SFTP like deleting files, renaming files, moving files. And by sending a custom request for IMAP, you can also move an email to a different folder. For web services, we have a lot of functions there. So we can uh, use all the SOAP and REST web services. We can do the uh, HTTPS with the latest uh, TLS version. Uh, we have a lot of JSON and XML functions, so if you get back data or you have to prepare data to be sent, you can use our plugin functions and we can also send forms as if you would use a browser to fill a form and send it. We can send emails with multiple attachments, we can include HTML and plain text, we can add uh, two um, CC, PCC. Uh, recipients. We can do the text encoding correctly. And I have an example which uh, batch sends emails um, 
and it sends several emails in parallel over several connections, so it's much quicker than if you send one of them. So. You can also receive emails using IMAP and POP3 protocol. So you can connect to a server, you can query the list of the emails, you can download an email, you can process it, uh, let the plugin pass the email to get you the subject, the text, all the attachments, probably decoded. You can send custom requests to delete an email, and we can also detect duplicate emails uh, by comparing the hashes, uh, as you see in the example database. For PDF, we have two ways uh, to handle PDF. The first is the PDF Kit framework from Apple, which supports well, all the PDF features Apple allows us to do. And then we have Dyna PDF, a cross-platform PDF library, which we can use all on Mac, on Windows, on Linux, on iOS. So we can use it everywhere and have uh, the same results on all platforms. But it's an extra purchase. With PDF, well, we can merge PDFs, like you make an invoice and add your add a flyer on the back. We can split PDFs, so you have a document management system, for example, you can uh, make uh, each page its own PDF, if you want. You can render a preview picture for each PDF page. You can extract the text from the PDF pages, and we can print uh, PDFs directly. For example, uh, on a FileMaker server, you can send a PDF file directly to a printer and print it. So we can also create PDFs, we can edit them, we can, for example, add page numbers to your uh, PDF pages, we can convert PDFs to PDFA or PDFX standards, we can embed uh, XML into a PDF file, which is needed for the uh, Zugfetch standard uh, in Germany here. Uh, we can uh, create form fields, fill them with values, send them to the client. The client uh, changes maybe the values, send it back. You can import the values so the user can, for example, uh, correct his address. You can extract all the images in, in a PDF. For example, for your document database, and you want to maybe extract all the images and uh, store them separately. We can also f extract text, and not just text on the whole page, but also text on a certain position on the page. And this way we can, um, for example, find an invoice ID if it's always on the same area of the, the invoice. We can also encrypt PDFs and protect them with a password, so users can't print them without knowing the password. We can uh, find text and highlight it, so you can have your document database and you search for a PDF and you know it's on, on a certain page, then you can let the plugin um, highlight the text and have it uh, highlighted with a yellow box around you can also find and replace text, so if you have an um, existing PDF, for example, made with FileMaker and you want to replace some text with a, a value, you can do that. We can use tables to lay out data on a PDF page if we draw it ourselves without a FileMaker layout. We can uh, work with annotations, plate annotations, flatman annotations. We can add clickable links uh, to, a, to a PDF page, so you can jump from one page to another, or jump to, an, to your browser for an URL. And we can sign PDF files, so the user can later check if the PDF was modified. And we can optimize PDF files. This uh, recreates the structure and fixes any pending errors. Uh, we can scale down images and convert them to JPEG, and this is uh, quite clever because if the JPEG would be bigger, it keeps the original picture, so it works really nice. Uh, we can also replicate, uh, replace duplicate fonts and images with references, so the image or the font is only stored once in the PDF page. So if you merge two PDFs and both have the same logo picture, we only store it once. And we can remove private data, for example, all the data from InDesign. 
Here's an example of style text. So we have a text in a FileMaker field on the left, and then we can transfer it to a PDF page and uh, carry over all the, all the styles, like bold and different font colors. Next, we have a lot of functions for encryption. So if you need anything encrypted with AES, Blowfish, or whatever, we have several available. And you can also decrypt. Uh, we have hashes, so for several web services, we need to authenticate and uh, use well, hashes. And so we have a few options there. We also have global variables, uh, which you can use independently of any database. We have uh, a way to save associative arrays in memory. So you can, for example, load um, all the zip codes into a dictionary in memory and then look up your city name for the zip code without uh, using a database query. The quick list allows you to store a list in memory with index, so any access is very fast. Much faster than the get value function in FileMaker. We can uh, work with Word files. So you can query the text of a Word file, you can replace uh, text with actual values, and um, add table rows if you, for example, make an invoice, and then write the Word file back to disk. Yeah. Is it also possible to, to uh, create a new Word file? No, no, it's always reading an existing file as a template. So you, yeah. so you need, an, you need a Word file, yeah, to start. But then you can change everything? No, it's, it's, it's quite a limited function. It allows you to take a template Word file and place tags with values. Okay. So you have placeholders in your Word file. And if, uh, if a placeholder is in a table, we can uh, append table rows. So you can have uh, so, uh, as, as many entries as you need in the table. But it's, uh, it's not for creating new. Okay. What I'm looking for is a uh, possibility to, to uh, work in work for reading, uh, for writing, uh, put the content text of it back to the time maker to the store and uh, vice versa. So you can um, choose where you want to work. Well, Normally it works in the, in the database application, uh, uh, but in some cases it's required that the user uh, can work in word files, for example. Well, if, it, if it's running on a Mac, you can use our rich text functions for mm -hmm. this. A rich, rich text. Yeah. So those can, uh, well, they are built for RTF, but they are, I think they can also use with the Word file format. And they are limited to the features uh, that Apple supports uh, with the frameworks. So it does about what text edit does. But that should work for some basic formatting. But on the Word uh, functions, you also can get the XML of the page, and you can do whatever you want in the XML and pass it back. That's another possibility. OK, so next we have audio and video recording for Mac and Windows, with device selection and a preview in the layout. So you can uh, well, take snapshots from a webcam or record short audio video segments. Next we have clipboard functions. So you can put something on the clipboard like HTML, text, file references, pictures, or get it back from the clipboard. And this also works for the various XML data formats from FileMaker. So you can copy a layout object, you can get the XML back, store it in a database for, well, SNIH. Snippet database. Um, we have one in the examples folder, so if you need, um, you can use that. 
Then we have address book functions. So if you need to sync uh, your contacts from the FameMaker database to the uh, system address book, you can do that. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of SQL functions for inside FileMaker. So you can insert a record in a table without switching the layouts. We can also um, make a query in one table and insert another table and copy data very easily. You can add records from tab return uh, text blocks. So if you copy something in Excel and paste it into a field in uh, FileMaker, you can fill records. And uh, when we do our uh, select and give you back the values, we preserve the original data types, so your containers stay containers and your data is not converted to text in between. So we ha next we have a SQL to other databases. So you can connect to various other databases directly from FileMaker. And we can run any SQL commands on those connections and well, select data from one side, push it to the other side. And some people use it to, for example, download all the new orders from, uh, from their webshop, from the website. Next we have schedules, so we can run a script uh, by, by name from any file. We can schedule scripts, uh, SQL commands, evaluations to run at a time, in a time, well, in five seconds, or every day at five o'clock, or maybe in three weeks at three o'clock, or on idle, so when the user is not using the uh, solution for maybe 10 minutes, we can log him out. You can modify all the schedules, uh, well, cancel them, whatever you want. We have a lot of file functions, so people need to copy files, move files, rename files. Um, you may want to mount a network disk and copy files onto your backup disk. We can, of course, query the free disk space, so you can send an email to yourself when the server is running out of disk space, or check if a file is in use, uh, so you know which files are open on the FileMaker server. We have image editing functions, so you can load images and convert from one format to another. We can scale, rotate, uh, compose, where you can put one picture on another, you can write text on the pictures, you can rotate the pictures. You can find, maybe if you have a big picture and you know there's a barcode in between, you can find uh, maybe the first black pix pixel and then you can maybe cut this piece with the barcode and give it to the barcode detector. And we can read metadata. Next we can define hotkeys, so you can define a key combination to trigger a script. Very nice if you are in a different application, you can press a key and then you can maybe copy some data and the, uh, uh, then bring the FileMaker application to the front and do something useful. If you have one of those new MacBooks, you can uh, use the touch bar. So we can have buttons on the touch bar to trigger scripts. We also have uh, JSON and XML import functions, so we can um, import some JSON text or some XML, automatically uh, detect what are records there, create the tables and the fields, import the records, and uh, later you can, of course, after the first import, you can create uh, the layouts to actually see the data. Uh, some people use that to automatically import new data every month and looks very nice. Next we can run, uh, we have a lot of functions for the web viewer. We can run JavaScript in the web viewer. So you can get the current HTML text. Um, you can fill form fields and submit them. You can of course read whatever is on the page. You can print the web page or even get an image or a PDF rendered.
Next we have sockets. So if you need any low level TCP, IP or UDP sockets, you can use our plugin to connect to various devices. Yeah. Um, the UDP broadcast allows you to send a message to all the computers in the local network, which some people use for a nice chat function. It should work all fine with IPv6 and v4. If you want, you can have SSL encryption and trigger scripts when something is coming in. We also have serial ports where you can connect to your local ports, even if it's a USB adapter. You can trigger scripts if data is coming in, and a lot of people have devices which they need to talk to, like our scale. So it's possible. Next, you can use calendars and reminders. So on a, on a Mac, we can um, work with the local database from iCal. And you can create events. And then you can synchronize them to your Google account, your iPhone, or whatever. And some companies use it to have one central Mac, which has all the calendars subscribed for the, for the members of the staff. And then they can create events for all the people on one central place. Next is printing. We can uh, control the print dialog on, on Mac. And on Windows we can print for you and uh, pass options. So you can select the printer, you can select the paper format, um, the paper tray, and a few other features. Next, we have a lot of uh, smaller features, like changing the doc icon or the um, application name, so it doesn't need to be FileMaker. We have a speak command. We can measure the text width um, of, of a piece of text, so you know if it fits the label. We can detect if a script was triggered by lift or right mouse button. And we can uh, automatically um, generate database design reports by a script, so you can um, make a new report every evening after you finish your work. Is it possible to um, inject the public key? Yeah. This is yeah, the event monitor feature. If you turn it on, the plugin will monitor all mouse clicks, okay. and then you can always ask, uh, was the last click a double click or not? Fine. Or was the last one was left mouse, right mouse button, or middle mouse button on Windows. So some people use that to have uh, clickable areas on the layout where they do different action depending on what click it, what click okay. you get. Yeah. And the text or the measure text width. So that was measure text in a field that is following. Well, you pass a, a field, you pass a text to the plugin and tell the plugin which font to use and uh, what size of the font, and then the plugin can calculate how big would it draw this text. Okay. And some people have uh, custom functions which uh, will reduce text till it fits, and then put maybe a few dots on the end. Uh, or for a label, you can decide uh, if you take the longer version or the shorter version, depending on how much space you have. On Windows, we can query the management instrumentation, so we can know a lot of things about your computer, like what are the built-in hard disks, network adapters, or Windows version. We can zip files, we can uh, listen for notifications from the system, like a uh, change of the screen resolution. We can disable AppNap on the on Mac, so your, your FileMaker is not sleeping too much. We can log in via SSH to different computers and run commands, and we can uh, feed uh, LDAP server, so you can use LDAP for your authentication of uh, your FileMaker solution and also have uh, scripts which send new user, create for example new users on the LDAP server. What's the difference between the, um, the directory administration on, on, on Mac? Uh, on, on the farming, of course, uh, you can no. use um, Active Directory. 
Yeah, you can use Active Directory on from FileMaker to authenticate to log in. Yeah. And now you can also tell the Active Directory server that it should uh, create a new user, update a user. Oh, okay. So, and so you can manage your user base in FileMaker and upload all the all the configuration to the LDAP server, mm -hmm. and then use that to log in. Okay. okay. Uh, we can uh, talk to various scanners, so Flatpad or Document Feeder. And uh, this goes with image capture on Mac or with Windows image acquisition on Windows. So you need those drivers for your scanner, of course. Uh, the older interface was Twain uh, for Mac and Windows, which is no longer well supported. You can scan with or without uh, dialogues. And we also have an OCR feature if you need text recognition. If you want, you can use Java. So you can load an existing Java class, create a new object, call methods, set properties, query properties, we convert the data types, and uh, you can use this to interface with existing Java code. For example, I have a few customers uh, which got Java classes from a bank to, to talk to the bank server. And um, well, this can now be done in FileMaker. Next, we have file system events. So you can watch for changes in a folder. We have a function for Windows and one for Mac. And on Mac, uh, there's a history available, so you can query all the changes uh, in the past while your application was not running. And we have context menus. So we can show a context menu anywhere on the screen. Usually we show it where you have your mouse. You can add submenus, styles, icons, colors, and trigger scripts uh, when something is selected, or just get back the ID of the menu entry, which was clicked. On Mac, if you don't like the scroll elasticity, um, you can turn that off with a plugin. Also, for Mac, we have syntax highlighting, so we have a rule based system to color your calculations and scripts. We offer several context menus. Uh, we have highlighting of blocks. We can search the relationship graph, uh, the scripts and go to lines and also for older file maker versions provides the line numbers. So here you see our block highlighting. So you no longer get confused which if belongs to which and if. Here's a context menu where you see that we can um, uh, activate, deactivate um, lines right away where we are. And the menu is localized, so here you see German commands. Also, when you right-click on a script, you can jump to the script, uh, a feature which FileMaker copied for version 16, with the command click. But if you need it for 15, you can have it. Also, I made a new preference dialog, so you can turn all those um, benefits uh, on and off on Mac. And now a few uh, newer things. Um, so for Dyna PDF, we can now print with print dialog, so we can show a dialog. We can add the links and the watermark annotations. We, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can Okay. So I want to add a font in PDF. Yeah, you can uh, create your PDF FileMaker, then you can load it in Dyna PDF. You can create form fields by passing in, uh, by calling the right function and passing in the coordinates where the field should be. Mm -hmm. Give the field a name and then 
Save to PDF, okay. And afterwards I can read. Um, yeah, you can run back later, read uh, all the, the fields, like the name and the value, and then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we got a couple of XML functions. So you can um, well, query XML subtrees. So you can say uh, this node and then this node and this node give me the value. You can get the text of an, uh, of an XML block. We can create variables in your scripts uh, based on, on values in XML. We can also work with the attributes and list all the nodes in an XML block. So those help with uh, working with XML. <laughs> you also can um, look in the certificate files um, and uh, get a certificate out of a Pika CS12 file and use private and public keys. Um, and those are needed uh, most often for the curl transfers for authentication. So if you for example, talk to Apple's uh, web service, you have to use a client-side SSL certificate. And we got a few more little things. For example, if you have a file container on, on your layout on a Mac, you can now track it, uh, track the file to the desktop, for example, which isn't possible in FileMaker directly. You can also make secret queries and get you back uh, the result as uh, poor text or a CSV. So you can uh, do exports easier. We also got examples for curl batch FTP downloads. So you can simply say, I have a folder with maybe 10 files and the plugin can in one call download all 10 files. We can um, have web viewers on the on the layout and keeps them invisible from the user so you can still interact with them but the user doesn't see the web viewer and our focus dialog can be used asynchronously and if the user presses the cancel button uh, you can trigger a script and the latest version got a few new things like for example windows user notifications so we can show a notification to the user like any other Windows application. We can modify the Windows registry, look up values, store values, change things, makes the computer no longer working. <laughs> but with the registry you can do a lot of uh, big mess, uh, but also you can do good things. We can use uh, the system certificates for our curl transfers. So if you have uh, special certificates installed in your local keychain on a Mac, we can use those. And for FileMaker 16, I revote uh, the web viewer functions and the syntax highlighting, and we got a new MBS script step. For Windows, we can uh, use a messaging API, so we can send emails with the client. And uh, this works um, with Outlook, Thunderbird, and others. For Thunderbird, we can even set several attachments. Outlook complains always if it's more than one. But we can also send HTML over Outlook. So, good thing. Uh, it looks like this. So you get a message composing window from Outlook, and then the user can edit the email, like with FileMaker. But, um, FileMaker uh, doesn't work well if you have uh, not the right bit number for the Outlook of FileMaker and for the plugin this should not matter. Does the mail client have to be your default? What? If you're going to use Windows Mac and send emails, yeah. does the mail client have to be set to the default on, on Windows? Uh, well, on Windows you can only have one uh, maybe uh, registered app. Yeah. So. Normally the last one you installed. <laughs> and here are uh, the notifications we have. So we have notifications on iOS, notifications on Mac, and notifications on Windows. So support all three. For 
For more information, I do have a website. And you can see a few videos. Uh, you can read the blog or subscribe to the mailing list. And now we come to questions. The link to your video site, that's all on your main website. Yeah, sure. There's a tab for video. Okay. Um, with regards to curl, um, what would you say MPS, I know you did this a couple of things already, but what would you say um, the MPS plugin does uh, above uh, basic file maker built in curl? Yeah, with FileMaker 16, they have a, a bit more, and I wanted to make a comparison table. But there are some things FileMaker clearly doesn't do, like, for example, running something in the background. Because with FileMaker and the Insert URL script step, you always have to wait. And so the plugin can do it in the background. I'm also not sure if, if, uh, if FileMaker supports anything with SSH, like SFTP. Yeah. Of course, the plugin um, can do SFTP. I'm also not sure if FileMaker ever support all the email stuff because I just added it for the rest uh, API, so they may not care. Also, I think uh, FileMaker doesn't have all the SSL features enabled. So, but. We will have to make a comparison sheet somewhere. Uh, currently, the main reason is that I still support older FileMaker versions. So, well, for FileMaker 16, you have to have FileMaker 16. Yes. So, and not everyone is already on 16. Is it possible to um, build a solution to work cross-platform with um, iMap? to send and uh, get emails. Yeah, you can. Um, we have an example for IMAP, where you, which downloads all the emails from an IMAP account. I usually recommend that you set up an extra IMAP account for your automated processing. Mm -hmm. So you only get the, the right emails to the right account. Then your FileMaker solution can just go there and ask for the first email, process it, delete it, and get start over. So you go one by one and just download the emails you need and do something. And I know a few customers. Um, um, I don't know how it's called, plugin for sending and to work with, with emails uh, in CRM solutions, for example, um, because this is a very important part for the most customers. Mm -hmm. that they can work uh, on every platform via email, for example, mm -hmm. and um, I, I search for the email in the system and see, okay, this customer uh, was written some emails and uh, I don't want to go to an ordinary place to write my emails. I don't mm -hmm. write my emails in on the iPad or on the Mac or whatever, and but this was uh, must uh, um, work on both platforms. Yeah. Is it possible to build such a system with this plugin? I think so. Yeah. I, I know that a few customers do that. They okay. have scripts running on client or server, depending on what they do, which can then download emails. And put them in records. It's possible, yeah. yeah. And this plugin works with IMAP accounts. Yeah, yeah. with IMAP, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have a thought you had another session about the cloud in your plugin. Or? I thought about it, yeah, uh -huh. but didn't get much feedback. What, what, what were you going to talk about with that? Well, the first thing is. Uh, but the plugin works there, maybe um, fire up a server and demonstrate it. Uh -huh. But I'm not sure. But it's basically it's going to be the same. The plugin works there, yeah. it should be yeah. the same as any other FileMaker server. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the specialty is that it's Linux, so a few mm -hmm. things are different. Yeah. But in general, 
the plugin should just work fine. For FM Cloud, yeah. for if you spin up FileMaker on the Windows PC2, AWS, it's all going to be the same. Yeah. It's the same as any yeah. other yeah. Windows server. So. Yeah. So far, I'm still waiting for a few people to, to actually use it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't. Well, either it's not used or it's working so perfectly, I don't get any bug reports. <laughs> Do you have any people that are using FileMaker Server uh, on Windows, uh, AW, uh, Amazon Cloud? Or? Or, well, they don't tell me. They don't tell you. <laughs> yeah. You don't get any. Uh, this. Well, the plugin is, is written in a way that it should run on any Windows version um, from XP on forward. And yeah, I don't know how many people are using FM Cloud yet because of some things that doesn't work. The first thing is um, FM Cloud was announced, so any new project can decide. Yeah. The old projects are already deployed and they will continue to work. So for a new project you can decide and maybe you just want to wait for, for next fall where the, the cloud servers are upgraded to 16 and get the newer, newer features. Yeah. yeah, we are still waiting for scheduled scripts there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. So let's uh, let's show you something. Um, for example, let's say you want to try the curl functions to send an email. So we have here. An example. Project, um, example database where we have a um, um, uh, server, username, password, we have some text and I put a lot of work into encoding uh, all characters including smileys. <laughs> yeah, that's an extra work. Um, so you give uh, your name, sender name and sender email and receiver emails, uh, name and emails and then some plain text. <laughs> And if you want some HTML text for your email, um, in general, most email readers will just display the HTML if there is HTML. But on the other side, if you if you receive emails on on your iPhone, uh, your iPhone normally shows HTML, but in the list view, it shows the plain text. And you can use that by putting here a more compact uh, text um, than the full details of the HTML. You can also have as many attachments as you want. Attachments can come from a container or from a file pass. Or just be a block of text. And now let's, let's uh, check in the example. So, by the way, have you seen here my plus button? <laughs> So you can all read it. I hope so. Oh, oh, it's in, uh, German. Uh, just a second. Sixteen English. I do have a collection of little applications uh, which allow me to launch FileMaker in any language. You find it on my blog. <laughs> so back here, this is English. So. Um, we create an email. This gives us back a number. And this is the number of the email we built. We can uh, build several emails in parallel on different uh, scripts. Like on a FileMaker server, several scripts can run in parallel at the same time on different CPU cores. So we always must be uh, careful with the threading. So you get back an ID and then you can pass all the values to the plugin, like the, the sender, the HTML text, the plain text subject, uh, server details. And then here we loop over all the records for the addresses, so we can pass to the plugin all the, the recipients. Also we pass all the attachments. 
like here with att add attachment container or add attachment file. Every time we pass uh, the ID of the email, so it's added to the correct email. And then we start a new call session. We get back an ID, and now we, we marry both. Uh, so we tell our send mail function to use this curl session, and then it moves, it generates the email and passes it to the curl session. Then we can set a few options like SSL encryption and call perform function to actually do the transfer, which will then contact the email server, log in, send the email, and uh, return any errors. And here in the debug messages uh, field, we get the log, and there we can read if everything is successful. And, and finally, we do clean up here, so memory is released. Now we, we create um, well, we create here an object, and we set properties, and on the end we have to to free it from memory. No, the, the memory of the computer. So, uh, so um, this computer has, uh, I think, 16 gigabytes, and somewhere in this memory, uh, the email is stored. And if you don't free them, uh, FileMaker will use more and more memory, and uh, eventually, FileMaker may run out of memory. So. Well, if you ever send only five emails, you can keep some memory, nobody cares. Uh, but I had people who processed uh, thousands of pictures, and especially with the 32-bit version of FileMaker, you can easily run into the limits of memory, and then FileMaker stops working. <laughs>